And good day. Thank you for joining us. I am Tamara Scott. We bring you truth for our time each week as we bring you help when the headlines hit home. It's not that hard, and yet it seems so difficult. But when you don't know where to find answers or get direction, you know, if God's expected you to live through it, he's directed you how to do it. And we can find that in his word. So no matter what the topic is, uh, sometimes we have more fun. Sometimes usually we're pretty serious because there are so many serious issues facing us today. We will take you through the headlines and through the issues and the current events and uh, give you hope, actually, because we usually can find hope, always can find hope in God's word. But we can usually figure a way in which we can see a way out here on earth because of his word. And so today, like most days, we'll have a couple of great guests joining us. Dr. Alveda King will be joining us at 10 a.m. Central Time. Actually, we'll, we'll bring her in in just a few minutes. She is getting off a plane. I love her spirit. Whenever possible, she is there. I don't care where it's at in the United States. She finds a way to make herself available when somebody calls and asks. So she's getting off a plane right now, and then she's going to join us in just a few minutes. As you know, she's coming to Iowa. We're bringing her in July, uh, January 19th through the 21st. And uh, we don't even know what those events really look like. They're unfolding before us. But before Ferguson ever began, we had invited her as members of Concerned Women for America to come back to our state. And I had met her in a couple of different events last year and just really connected with her spirit, with her heart. And so we're excited to have her coming back into Iowa. And then she'll be here a couple times next year, but we'll be bringing her in January, Martin Luther King Day, her uncle's uh, memorial uh, day that we give thanks for the work and the, and the words that he brought to us in a peaceable manner. And then second half hour, and this could be hit or miss. It might be kind of fun. But Sheriff Mack, he's been a guest with me on several different interviews on networks, uh, three or four different networks. And he has written books, as you know, uh, The County Sheriff, America's Last Best Hope. He gets what is legal, what is constitutional, and what is not. Right now, today, while we're talking, uh, sheriffs from around the country hundreds of sheriffs from around the country are meeting in Washington, D.C. to hold the line and to remind congressional members what is constitutional, what is not. And because a president says it so, doesn't mean it's so. And so uh, we'll be talking with them at the second half hour. And they're in between office visits, and so we'll see how that goes. But I appreciate them taking time out in this day to talk with us. So we want to thank our sponsors as well, Crave Ministries, uh, um, Christians for America, christiansforamerica.com, for coming alongside of us in the very early stages of this ministry and making sure that we were able to get truth out and and, uh, encouraging us to continue as they are doing the same, talking with folks and uh, getting the truth to people so that they can have honest hope, not the hype that a lot of politicians like to give, but honest, true hope that good statesmen will also bring you strategic plans on how to fix things, but also the foundational truth uh, that made this country strong and our Christian heritage. So we're going to go to messages right now and let our sponsors speak to you. When we come back, we'll join our American Family Radio family and uh, You'll hear us bringing in the Restoring Hope music for that portion of the program. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey, psst. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car... I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes 
to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. Day. Thank you for joining us. I am Tamara Scott. We appreciate you taking time out to listen in or perhaps you watch on the uh, taping of the show each Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. 10 a.m. Central Time, you can join us at webcast1live.com. The studio is webcast1, one is spelled out, live.com. We'd like to have you with us and then uh, you can listen to those archives anytime, Tamara Scott Live. If you go to YouTube, Tamara Scott Live YouTube. We, at this point, have some pretty good archives for you, whether it's David Barton's show when he joined us the day after the election and talked about, uh, you know, win, lose, or draw, where do we go from here, uh, whether your candidate won or lost, what what's the future for this country, and then... Um, he also brought in, a little on that particular show, and I bring it up for a reason, I had talked about administrative law. I had brought up this history of the danger of administrative law to you from the Imprimus, this great little newsletter that comes out from Hillsdale College, I think, each month. And uh, that particular one is from September 2004. Philip Hamburger <laughs> wrote it. And uh, he's talking about how we've voluntarily given over to administrations and to bureaucracies through rules and regulations the ability to make law. Never was it supposed to be that way in America. And even after the Magna Carta, we saw this change. We took away the divine right of kings to be above the law and to change law at whim. And so I had talked about that, and I wasn't even sure why I brought it up. And then David Barton reminded us during his interview that 3,800 laws have been added. Listen to why I'm saying that. Added, not passed, through the Congress, through congressional measures or constitutional measures, but have been added through administrative changes, bureaucracies, rules, regulations, 3,800 laws since 2012. This is out of control, and we've got to get a grasp on it because these are unelected people. Your, uh, your representatives, you can at least toss them out. If you get mad enough, it happens on occasion. We, we take out the incumbent, but there is no recourse for this. It's very hard to get bureaucrats out once they're in. If you want term limits, they would best be on bureaucrats, in my opinion, not the elected officials. You already have term limits. It's, elect, it's an election Get involved, get get uh, motivated, and put people in office or take those out that aren't doing what is right. So I also need to come back just a little bit. Restoring Hope, um, we're so thankful to Mac for sharing his airtime with us. And Mac usually talks to you about restoring hope from the individual perspective, overcoming addictions and lifestyles that are dangerous and creating and, and having deliverance from those things. I usually come at it from the cultural or or civil aspect of how do we make things better for us, for our lives, for our communities, uh, by restoring hope in the system and and restoring what is right, what is good about America. And so that's kind of the difference we have on this. And I need to thank our sponsors before I start into the show as well. Christians for America, Crave, ChristiansforAmerica.com. We thank them for coming alongside Webcast One Studios, WebcastOneLive.com Studios. And so, and if you ever want to get a hold of us, you can go to uh, uh, Truth For Our Time Facebook page, Truth For Our Time Facebook page, and you can find us there and uh, give us comments as well. Joining me right now is someone who has been a champion of people. Uh, her main purpose, I think I could say, is to glorify God. Coming from a, a history that is a large part of the fabric of this nation, Dr. Alveda King, niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., will be uh, joining us just momentarily, but she's written a book called Ten Truths for You, Your Family, and Our Nation to Prosper. King Rules, I'm holding it up for those of you who are watching live um, on webcast1live.com, King Rules. And she is going to be joining us here in Iowa, January 
19th, Martin Luther King Day. She'll be coming to Iowa, spending a couple days with us. We're going to have community meetings. We're having a, a, she's going to open the session for the Senate and the House uh, the following Tuesday, the 20th. And we're going to be setting up just uh, relational meetings. We had this planned clear back August last year before Ferguson, Missouri ever took place. And we're so thankful. I feel like it's providential that she is coming to Iowa. We're building relationships. We're strengthening our community before any harm or hurt. Well, I guess maybe there's already some hurts in our community, but before we have the escalation that we see in other communities, and we don't want outside media sources coming here and stirring up trouble that isn't here. We're bringing her in, and we're very pleased that she's joining us. Dr. Mar- Dr. Alveda King, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Kamara. How are you? I am fine. You amaze me because Ryan told me you were just getting off a plane. I'm literally in flight. I just stepped off the plane. I do some of these innovative news like this because I would miss some of them if I didn't try. You you have boundless energy, and you continually amaze me. If somebody calls on you for help or calls on you to come, you make it every possibility. You you try and be there. So thank you so much for that heart of service. Well, Tamara, I say I can leap tall buildings at a single and a half bound. Now. <laughs> I'm getting a little older, but uh, I do enjoy it. All right, so I've told the folks you're coming to Iowa January 19th, and if anybody out there wants more information on that, you can contact Concerned Women for America of Iowa. Get on that. Facebook page or through the national organization cwfa.org and Dr. Alveda King your website and your contact um, just alvedaking.com will work right now or africanamericanoutreach.com alvedaking.com will work right now or africanamericanoutreach yes dot com can you hear me because I'm wondering I'm on a cell phone I hear you great can you hear me all okay. right yeah Okay, good. All right, so you have been so busy lately in Ferguson, Missouri, quite a bit. Let's just touch on that. We don't have to give the whole program to that. But, you know, take us kind of through uh, where we're at, the issues, and the, and the solution. Well, I don't know how many of your listeners are familiar with Charisma Magazine, headed up by Steve Strang. And he, they all set a good example down in Florida with the Trayvon Uh, Stanford, Florida, with the Trayvon Martin situation, whereas they begin to immediately start praying as soon as that situation occurred. And it was uh, actually, they were able to offset a lot of the violence and things through prayer. So I want to remind people of that. Uh, I also broadcast on American Family Association uh, uh, radio with the Urban Network there with Will and Nikki Addison. And we do a lot of talk on these as well. So I welcome this opportunity, Tamara, to come on the air with you. Now, what we've been discussing and what we've been saying in all of my work, and I'm going to try to give people a picture of what I do. You did mention my book, King Rules. I'm director of African American Outreach with Priest for Life, and that's a pro-life message. So broadcasting truth, nonviolent, uh, peaceful conflict, Nonviolent uh, peaceful conflict resolution through my uncle Martin Luther King Jr. and my dad, his brother Reverend A.D. King. So we went to Ferguson. When I say we, I'm giving a lot of websites and things now. I'm tying some things together. Uh, Restore the Dream 2015 is another African American group, but not solely African American, but putting all of this together with our good friend Dr. Albert Calloway from Iowa out there with you. Nonviolent peaceful resolution. So when you hear people say, no justice, no peace, we're going to burn this building down and all of that, that is not peaceful. That is not godly. And so we go to Ferguson. We uh, are working with people in New York now, Staten Island, working with you coming out to Iowa with this same message, that powerful message, if my people who are called by my name can humble themselves and pray, Tamara, there's just so much. And I'm naming all of these. They seem to be individual groups, Concerned Women of America and all that. But all of us together, coming together in that unity that Jesus Christ talked about, us becoming one voice, this is what we're doing. 
Absolutely, and we're thankful that you are doing it. You mentioned American Family Radio, and of course, uh, to those who are listening online, you can listen to portions of this show each Sunday evening, 6.30 p.m. Central Time, on an American Family Radio station near you. You can just go to their website, afa.net or afr.net, and you will find a list of radio stations near you. There are several in Iowa. and there's Radio, some... too. Okay, I didn't know that. That's great. Yep, okay. you will be airing 6.30 Sunday uh, evening, 6.30 p.m. Central Time. So, um, And uh, we are so thankful you're coming into Iowa to work with us. We continue to see these these things kind of blown up in the media. What What is the media not telling? I mean, we, we only see one side of it in the mainstream media, and we see so little in the other, in the, of, of the truth really coming out. Well, the prayer meeting and the information rally we had in uh, Iowa recently, where you and I met, the news media will not cover us speaking about constitutional issues, about the real intent of the law, about how to discern whether a candidate is God-centered or will uh, vote, uh, vote on the floor of the House or the Senate according to God's wisdom. You see, they're not going to show us congregating by the hundreds and sometimes thousands to do that, the media would rather show you a small modicum of what's happening, somebody throwing firebombs or using profanity or people terrorized. Yes, that does exist, but there's a much broader energy or force that I call it who knows how to be not overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good because we know that God is good, you see. And so the media is not going to tell you, for instance, in Ferguson, there were several prayer rallies. We have a good friend, Jonathan Tremaine Thomas, uh, a very uh, young prayer warrior. He and his wife, of course, a Christian a Christian couple, happen to be African-American, but all, you know, a praying couple could be any ethnic group with power. So I'm not trying to lock this into an ethnicity point. But Jonathan, God told Jonathan to open up a tent, a tent prayer meeting in Ferguson for 21 days. He did that, and as he began to pray, some of the protesters would come to the tent and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Nobody showed that on the media. You did not see it. So in other communities, we're so glad we're having you in to Iowa. We planned this way back before Ferguson ever took place, before any of the other videos came up. And, you know, you and I, I'm sure, do not in any way condone uh, police brutality. I don't think most police officers would condone police brutality. No, no. How, how, in, what, are, what can other communities do be, to head off such a situation before it ever begins? What, we, what every community needs to discover, who is in charge of your local law enforcement? How is it being funded? Is it revenue-driven? Uh, are the police officers being told you have to write a certain amount of tickets? We need a certain amount of warrants issued or you're not going to get paid. That's going to change their concept or their idea about how to do safety and protection. The first order of the day for law enforcement is first to uphold the law and protect the people. But if they're beginning to think, I've got to write tickets today, uh, we need some more arrest warrants, then they're going to be out looking for perhaps suspects for the wrong motive, not necessarily looking for someone who's absolutely guilty, but seeing them as an opportunity for them to get their paycheck at the end of the week. So we need to see what those structures are, talk to the governing officials and say, yes, we want to be protected. Yes, we want to be safe. But please teach your officers not to think about a person as just another traffic ticket or another arrest warrant, but to really know what the law is, uphold the law. And you know what, Tamara, I'm, I'm changing this, this just a little bit, but I'm not going off task. There's out there on the media, some protesters have, were holding signs, and one of the signs said, a mother should not have to be concerned that her child will be shot when he goes to rob the store. <laughs> Seriously. And it really said that I'm serious. It's out there. And so the point there is, ma'am, you need to be teaching your child not to rob a store. Not you should be concerned that he's going to get shot if he robs the store. If he robs the store, or she should not be in consideration. That child should have what we call home training. And if the child is trained 
then he or she would not be in that wrong place at the wrong time. So I'm not upholding police brutality or anything like that. But some things, my, my parents used to say, you don't want to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Because even if your intention was not to do anything harmful, you may just be caught up in it. So we really do have to teach our children. We have to uh, train them well. We have to not justify actions that will cause them harm, even if they're not bad or evil children. I don't really think there are many evil or bad children. I think there's not enough home training. Someone said it to me this way. There are no illegitimate children. There are a lot of illegitimate parents. That's right. It's, it's, it falls on the parents before it hits the children. It really does. Now, I want to come back to what you said. I, I, first off, I just can't believe that quote. What city did that come out of? Do you know? I don't even know what city, but you just really, really Google that. It, I, um, it shows I you. To, it just shows you a whole mindset. Tamara, I have it on my phone. Give me. Um, because I kept the picture because I couldn't believe it. So I Googled it to make sure that it was true. And so here you have some protesters standing. And it says, no mother should have to fear for her son's life every time he robs a store. <laughs> and the person standing next to him, an African-American is holding that sign. There's a Caucasian person standing next. Shame on you, Ferguson. Now, that to me was unbelievable. I'm I am speechless over that. I just I the braze. I don't I don't yeah. know what to even begin. The mindset there. Um, no mother should ever ever be okay with the idea of her child robbing a store. Do you know what happened after I have adult children and grandchildren, and uh, we were all at the house together, and the grandchildren wanted to come in and just drop their shoes and coats in the middle of the floor. After their mother read that, they were like, pick their coat up, You're hang right. that coat up. Put those shoes up. (laughs) We don't want this happening to our children. So we must discipline and train them now. These are little three-year-old kids. We have to train children, train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when that child matures, the child will not depart from it. Or if they try, they'll come right back. So they're really, we are not training. And this has nothing to do with ethnicity or race. Nope. You know, they're not being trained. Right. Right, and I used to tell my my kids and my friends, if you don't discipline kids, someone else will. Either oh, either we discipline them at home, or they will go into a uh, detentional <laughs> detention yeah. center later. Either the military will get them, or the, the prison system, or something. So, and uh, we it, want to, to prepare them and train them respect of proper authority. Uh, obedience rather than rebellion, those types of things have to be taught. And so again, we're not in any way promoting uh, um, any abuse from a parent, but there is, there are those times when parents need to discipline, they need to scold, they need to uh, um, set a child straight, and sometimes that punishment seems tough and rough, and you know what, if you're in public and you see a parent doing that in a loving, responsible manner, do not get in their way. Because, right. because so often we have parents who are afraid to discipline their kids in the, in the middle of the, the uh, discount store because somebody might follow them to their car and anonymously turn them in. So, again, it comes back to you may have to embarrass your kids in public so that they're not tried in public as an adult. Let me give you a few seconds on that. My uncle, Martin Luther King, Jr., and you know my dad, Reverend A.D. King, his brother, they live in heaven now. They were civil rights warriors here. But my uncle wrote in the Ebony Advice column in the 1950s, and one of the things was about disciplining your children. So someone wrote in, Dr. King, I observed a situation where a child was misbehaving in public, and the mother was like, honey, don't do that. That's not nice. Now, what would your advice be in that? And he said, that's a strange way to discipline and raise a child. The parent has to have the authority, not the child. I'm paraphrasing, but you can find that Martin Luther King Ebony Advice column. And so in our family, and we talk about that in my book, King Rules, we advocated uh, proper discipline, as you said, loving discipline, not abuse, not harming the children, not yelling obscenities at them and hitting them uh, so they're going to be bruised or hurt. That's not discipline. That's not correct. But godly discipline. And uh, my grandson was with me the other day, one of my older grandsons. I have grandsons who graduated from college. I've got little baby granddaughters and sons. And he said, you're kind of rough on these children, Grandma. Uh, Are you sure that that's the way you need to do that? 
I said, Dan, I gave him the scripture. And he says, well, I kind of remember when we were little and we'd come over, you would do that to us too. I said, are you still living and breathing, Daniel? Yes, ma'am. And probably better off with more liberties yes. than he would be otherwise. Yes. And and so let me commend you as a grandma that you haven't turned into one of those. We were just with Dr. Uh, with uh, uh, Governor Jindal this past week. Uh, we okay. flew down to Governor Jindal's um, um, mansion in Louisiana. As you know, he's doing a response. We were talking about praying for I our nation. Yes. I know. We, uh, we would so love you to be part of it, but I know you have, I think, are you in the West Coast March for Life that day? Yes, I am, and I wanted to be with you, but I will be on the West Coast March. And so, folks, and I'll be join... coming to you right before the one in D.C. So we're just doing as much as I can. I know, and here's what I think: the whole week, Martin Luther King Day, the 19th through the 24th, that whole week, I think God has set aside something is going to happen in the heavenlies. I think there between what we're doing in Iowa. For, for us, the prayer response is happening the 24th, the prayer for life in the 22nd in D.C., the West Coast prayer uh, um, on Saturday. I think Louisiana's Right to Life is having their march on the 24th, and they're going to march into the Pete Maravich or Maravich ad, uh, Assembly Auditorium with their march as part of the response, a solemn call to assembly. And if you folks want more more information on that, please go to Facebook and just type in the response, Baton, Lu- Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the response, okay. Baton, Rouge, Lu- Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 10 a.m. is the official start time. There'll be some pre, pre-game, if you will, worship time ahead of that. But uh, it, uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tickets are available. There is no cost, but you do need to get tickets just so I think there's only like 12,000 seating. And you know, when Governor... Uh, Perry did this in 2011. I think they had 50 or 60,000 people show up. Our nation needs to return to prayer. We have got to once again call on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the country. This country was built on the covenant uh, of with that God. Our founding fathers and our forefathers understood that we would prosper and have protection when we called on his name and that when we would not, it was one of the Websters that said when we would not, how quickly catastrophe would overwhelm us. And can I mention something else really quick? Yeah. Dr. Albert Calloway, as we said, founder of uh, David Barton's uh, The Founder's Bible. And he and I are doing American Black and White at some of these events. We're going to speak briefly about one race, the human race, Acts 1726. And I just found out that uh, publisher Steve Strang over at Charisma has a new MEV Bible. And uh, you'll be hearing more from Charisma on that, uh, that English, uh, modern English version. I think you're going to hear more about the Bible and more from the Bible. There are going to be people promoting, advocating the Word in 2015. We're going to go out of 2014 into 2015, and you're going to hear more about God's Word. And that's how we're going to overcome evil, with the good news. I believe that, Tamara, and I know we're going to do that together, and uh, you with Governor Jindal and that response. I'm just, uh, God, is, as you say, you're going to see a convergence. When peripheral collide, convergence is imminent. So we think we're all doing our own thing, but when these all of these efforts touch each other, God is up to something, Tamara. I believe it. I do believe, just traveling the country as I get to do, I see pockets of revival. You know, we, we read about the remnant in the Old Testament. And I think wherever there's a remnant, wherever there's a remnant, there's hope. And God will restore a nation. And I believe we're going to see some wonderful things happening. You know, I was just recently in Poland and London traveling the steps of John Paul II and Thatcher and Ronald Reagan and how they basically stopped a Cold War before there was ever a shot fired. And uh, it was it was their faith Dr. King. It was what John Paul II was able to do in Poland. 2.5 million people standing with him, I think, for 76 consecutive hours to hear the truth, the honest truth, that they need not fear man, that their government is not their God, but their one true God could bring them salvation through Jesus Christ. It was an amazing message he gave. Well, I thank you for joining us. We are running out of time. Anything in closing you want to say to our audience out there? as we have this holy season. I would like to say uh, Christmas, of course, is coming. Pray for me while I'm with Will and Mickey Addison, uh, because we are going to be revealing some new truths this week as uh, 
we're with the urban 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 family talk. Will and Mickey Addison, a young African American couple, right on the edge of getting news out. I'm going to be with them for a couple of days. So pray for me while I'm in this little pocket, and we believe that some revival is going to explode here too. So thank you so much, and Merry, Merry Christmas if we don't talk before that, my friend. Thank you very much, and I hope we get one of our little phone calls in between now and then. I just love every time we get to, we get to have a quick conversation and some prayer. Dr. Alveda King has been my guest. She has challenged all of us. It is up to us to make a difference, and we need to be encouraged and never be complacent. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, You come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu and some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. (laughs) We have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Thank you for joining us. I am Tamara Scott, bringing you some truth for our time. And tell me it is much needed truth for our time. And uh, we thank Mac for sharing his air with us on Restoring Hope. Mac usually uh, gives you the um, help on an individual level for restoring lives, uh, uh, getting rid of destructive lifestyles and finding deliverance. And I usually come at it from a cultural or a civic perspective and helping you find ways uh, to have real hope, honest hope, and solutions in your community, improving your community, uh, working with our Constitution, honoring our Constitution, understanding our Constitution, that we can uphold one of the greatest documents on earth that has given more liberty and more freedom and, and is now the longest lasting document of its type. For a young country, a relatively young country, we have one of the oldest living governing documents. And so um, 
but we need to uphold it and protect it. And much of what we're seeing today, the problems we're seeing today, are simply, um, they're not because the Constitution is outdated. There is a move to redo the Constitution. I tell you, it does not need to happen. The Constitution is not the problem. It's the fact that we no longer uphold the Constitution and we're allowing unconstitutional acts to take place in our legislatures, in our Congress, and in our executive branch. And joining me today is going to be Sheriff Mack. Sheriff Mack, Richard Ivan Mack is his name, but I think most of the country knows him as Sheriff Mack. He's been a guest with us on several different networks, and we've talked about his book, uh, The The County Sheriff, America's Last Best Hope. In fact, on one of our previous shows, people in Iowa heard his message and were so taken by it that they donated the money to have a book sent to every county sheriff in Iowa. That's 99 county sheriffs. And so my thanks to our listeners, our faithful listeners who made that possible, but to Sheriff Mack, who was obedient and wrote the book. And let me also just say, sometimes we have differing faiths, differing beliefs, but when we can come together to do the right thing, I say we do it. And so with that, I'm pleased to have Sheriff Mack join me. Thanks for joining in today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a uh blistery, windy day here in uh, downtown Washington, D.C. So let's tell our listeners it's December 10th. You are, it's a march in D.C., though not a march like we see on TV, but you are heading to office to office, congressional members, opposing unlawful acts and one just instructing them on what the Constitution is. Give our listeners an update on what you're doing. Well, we started last night uh, with a lot of sheriffs coming into town and we were kind of devising a plan of action while we were having uh, dinner. And then uh, this morning, uh, we already met with uh, Senator Mike Lee from Utah, and uh, he is actually fighting the NDAA. He's uh, making a presentation on the Senate floor today uh, opposing the NDAA and that we should be repealing that uh, horrible law. Explain to our listeners what NDAA is. National Defense Authorization Act, which is the law that uh, allows uh, the president to declare whomever he wants to be a domestic terrorist or a threat. And if he declares that, then any person in America could be taken into custody and kept in custody until the perceived threat is over. You would have no constitutional rights. You would have no constitutional protections. And it would just be up to one man, the dictator in the White House, to determine if you go to jail and how long you go there for. So, and the, so that's what he's fighting. And we're, we were thrilled to find that out. We didn't know he was doing that until this morning. I have had the honor of interviewing your, your uh, Senator Lee and appreciate the work that he does very much on our behalf. Let's go back to this NDAA. I'm thrilled you're there. Let's give our people a little bit of history. If they don't know Sheriff Mack, you sued all the way to the U.S. Constitution, and was uh, it the... Not the U.S. Constitution. I sued on behalf of the Constitution to preserve the Constitution. I went all the way to the United States Supreme Court against the Clinton administration. Yes, that is correct. And let's finish that statement and watch the media never, ever really talked about, and people don't know, you won. Yes, we won. Uh, the first time in history where a sheriff sued the federal government and won a case at the United States Supreme Court. Absolutely miraculous. And we're still fighting for that liberty today, and that's why sheriffs from all over the country are, um, are, are doing that today. We're meeting with more congressmen today. In fact, we're going to a luncheon and a press conference here in about uh, 20 minutes. So I thank you for taking time out because I know you – are you speaking in that press conference? Uh, say that again? Are you speaking in that press conference? Yes, uh-huh. so I, I am. I've been asked to. I thank you for taking time out. You, both of our guests, uh, Dr. Alveda King, has taken time right off a flight, and you're taking time uh, right before your speech, so I appreciate that, and we'll just pray that God give you the words in which you're going to speak on that press conference on our behalf. Um, and so where can folks f- tune in or find in the archives? Where will, they, where will they be able to see that press conference? Will it be online somewhere? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know that it is, but uh, a lot of the national media are, are going to be there, so it might be on Fox or CNN or C-SPAN or whatever. I'm not sure who's going to be there, but we've been getting calls from the national media, uh, right and left, quite a bit. If so not- what I would what I would say, what I would tell all of your listeners, uh, go to cspoa.org, cspoa.org, and we'll have uh, archive uh, information there. 
And, and also, we want all of them to know that the sheriffs of this country are here fighting for them today. And I'm not kidding you. It really is a fight. And we're trying our best to keep this process peaceful and effective in restoring the Constitution as the supreme law of the land, as you were alluding to earlier. And let, let us just take note, while many are, are taking uh, uh, um, shots, I hate to use that, no pun intended, but they're, they're, yeah. they're making attacks on our law enforcement, our police officers, and we in no way condone pre- police brutality or some of the acts that we've seen uh, on video. But in most cases... Those who are in law enforcement are, are law-abiding citizens who are serving our communities at risk, at their own risk every day, leaving the house, never knowing if they really will return or not safely as they left. And so I want to thank you, one, for what all of you do as, as sheriffs, as, as even the police officers that we have as well. But this is your National Sheriff's Association. And so give us the acronym, what the CSPOA stands for. Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. Matter of fact, I have a constitutional sheriff standing right next to me. Sheriff Glenn Palmer from Grant County, Oregon, is here helping us with this effort, and he went to our meeting with us with Senator Lee just a few minutes ago. And um, do we th- th- thank him for his service as well. And, and if he wants to add in, he's welcome to jump on this conversation with you. Well, we've got to get, uh, I hate to cut you off, but uh, we've got to get, and I've been getting about three other calls while I was on this one. So, um, we're, and so we've, we've just, uh, we've just got such a tight schedule today, and so many people are trying to get a hold of me. And uh, so I'm going to have to uh, bid you a, a fond farewell, but uh, I'm so glad you're there. I appreciate the time, and uh, we'll just be following it, the news on this. You should be seeing this, and we will, if, if anybody wants to get on our website and get our email uh, so that we can get them the information on, on how we're going to follow up with this event today. And the website, again, is cspoa.org. That is correct. Thank you. Well, th- Sheriff Mack, thank you so much for giving us your time. I've been talking with Sheriff uh, 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 Sheriff Mack, um, Richard Ivan Mack is how some of you may know him. The book that I was talking about was The County Sheriff, America's Last Best Hope. He is with hundreds of county sheriffs, your county sheriffs. And I should have asked if they were spending their own money for this, um, to travel out there and speak on your behalf to your congressional members, whether it is uh, Mike Lee, as they're talking about, or whether it is uh, some of the other congressional members they'll be speaking with as well. Helping them understand, one, the Constitution, the need to uphold the Constitution, and uh, two, um, upholding the Constitution from the executive branch as well. And I'm not sure, uh, Sheriff, is there somebody else on the phone? Is uh, Glenn Palmer there? Uh, Sheriff Palmer is right here. Uh, Okay, so uh, Sheriff Palmer... Thank you for making the trip to D.C. Let me just ask, are the sheriffs that are there, are they there on their own money? You know what? I couldn't tell you that. Okay. Yeah, it's mostly uh, CSPOA, I believe, is funding. I hope so, yeah. to be honest with you. I mean, to ask these folks to go is is one thing, but to have to fund it. Our county sheriffs, you know, are not, this is not a lucrative field. You don't go into this field to make money. What, when most people come in to be a sheriff, it's out of a heart of service. For their community. And I'm getting quite a bit of wind in the background there. It's really windy windy here in Washington. Well, we we all knew that there was a lot of wind in Washington, D.C., didn't we? But now you're actually talking about weather and and, and it's (laughs) coming into the phone. But uh, Sheriff Palmer, give us your thoughts. Uh, You know, what do you what do you hope to see the outcome of your day today? You know, what would be nice is to see uh, Congress uh, take their authority, and uh, maybe if we have a meeting with the right people, we can get them to uh, um, defund the Obamacare, maybe. Um, we could... Uh, we're, we're mostly dealing with the amnesty issues, and uh, we're, what, what I'd like to see is that the president uh, stay within his limits of power and and uh, let Congress do their job. And you did you mention immigration? 
Yes. And so tell yeah, us... that was the amnesty part of it, yeah. Yeah, so um, what can county sheriffs do in their own area? And there are things that county sheriffs can do when the federal government refuses to fulfill their obligations. Uh, hey, sorry, this is Sheriff Mack. Uh, I've, I've got to go. I've got these calls. I've got some other people come from the press. I appreciate your time so much and all your listeners. Tell everybody thanks and be praying for us. We will be doing that. Thank you so much for your service there. And uh, be safe, and thank you for spending your time doing that. So I think we've had to say goodbye to Glenn Palmer as well, because I think he was on the Sheriff Max phone. Online, on hold, do we have Sam Bushman? Very good. We'll go to Sam Bushman, Bushman and Sheriff Bushman can join us as well. Sheriff, where is it that you're from? I'm actually not a sheriff. I'm the vice president of operations of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association and the nationally syndicated talk show host. How are you? I am well, thank you. Vice president of the um, Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. Correct. Vice president of operations, so I deal with the day-to-day events. We're supporting the sheriff's caravan today primarily to focus on immigration. And our goal is to build a coalition with congressmen and senators and sheriffs across the country. And the goal is to work together and realize that there's checks and balances in America, and we need sheriffs to have a seat at the table. They're the ones on the ground day-to-day dealing with the immigration issues, and they basically are claiming, hey, we have not been consulted, we have not been properly represented at the table, and we're demanding a seat at the table for discussion. And we thank you for doing that. I was asking one of the other gentlemen if the sheriffs had to pay for their own way out there because... Yeah, you know, most of the sheriffs are paying their own way. Wow. Some of them have been supported by the Constitutional Sheriffs of Peace Officers Association, uh, so any donation to CSPOA.org is always valuable. That's CSPOA.org. But most of the sheriffs have paid their own way. It's not a Republican or a Democrat or a liberal or conservative issue at all. It's merely sheriffs need a seat at the table when we discuss these serious, vital issues relating to the border. And we are so pleased that you are there, and I hope you can get several meetings in today. I was asking we Sheriff... We just got done meeting with Senator Mike Lee, uh, uh-huh. And now we're going to a big luncheon and then a press conference, and we've got several appointments of congressmen and senators after that as well. And I was asking Sheriff Mack, where can those who are listening right now who had no idea you were going, and the mainstream media will likely not cover what you're doing, where can we get coverage? Where can we see the press conference? Will you have it on your website later? There will, I don't know if they're going to have a live version of the press conference or not, but at my website, libertyroundtable.com, I will be reporting on the events. LibertyRoundtable.com. For those of you listening, LibertyRoundtable.com. And, and then I'm t- CSPOA.org as well. And the S, okay, CSPOA. For those listening, CSPOA.org. And, of course, you can always check us out on Tamara Scott Live on YouTube. We just keep the archives right there for you. Easy to find Tamara Scott Live on YouTube. Look for the date, December 10th. December 10, 2014, which is the day the sheriffs are marching on Washington, D.C. Tell us on immigration. I mean, people are wringing their hands. The folks you're going to talk to who can make a difference act like their hands are tied. What can they do? Well, first off, my response is when we suggest their hands are tied, it's a lie. And let me give you an example to make the point. We want to call it Obamacare when it comes to health care. But you understand that Obama is not even the proper branch of government to create any kind of law. Okay, that's the legislature. So the House and Senate want to blame it on the president, but the truth is they're the ones that created it, they're the ones that passed it, and they're the ones that are currently funding it. Since the Republicans have control of the House currently, and pretty soon the House and the Senate, the idea that they can do nothing about it is an absolute lie. The same thing is true on immigration. Uh, The Congress is a group that crafts our laws, and if the laws are broken, who do you look to? Congress. So the president has taken belligerent, unconstitutional action. That's true. However, the answers simply lie in Congress holding the president accountable for his actions. Maybe impeachment might be an idea. Certainly defunding his agenda might be an idea. But it all starts with our representatives. And what can you do? You can put pressure on your congressmen and your senators. You can meet them when they come home for Christmas in town hall meetings or go to their offices locally. If they don't know your name, if they don't know you by sight and by name, you're not doing a good enough job to influence them for your beliefs. And so there's a challenge to everybody out there. We often give you action items on this show. That's the challenge. Does your congressman or congresswoman know you by name? 
Have they heard of you in their office? And of course, you want to be loving and kind. There is no need to be rude. There is no need to be threatening. Loving and kind. And once they find out they can trust you, that you'll provide good, solid, credible information, you'll find not only will they know your name, they'll be calling you. They're looking for help, and they want to know the truth. There are so many laws that are passed each session that it's hard for them to be an expert on each and every one. They need sources they can trust. Let me give you a quick example that might make the point. Let me give you this example. We went to, to Congress last September 17th for Cash and Be Constitution Day, and I tried to get an appointment with my personal senator, Mike Lee, and I tried to do that for five months, and I did not get an appointment, believe it or not, even though I was willing to go 2,000 miles to Washington. But I did get to meet him and shake his hand because he has what's called Jello Day on Wednesday, where he actually lets people eat Jello. And I shook his hand and talked to him. But now that he knows my face, knows my name, he knows that I'm willing to go to Washington. I came back on this December 10th day, and believe it or not, it took me all of less than an hour to get an appointment, and he kept his appointment, and we met with him. So the, the idea that you cannot make a difference is bogus. The idea that they will not listen to you is false. The idea that you can have an influence and that you can make a difference with persistence if they know your name, if you come across respectfully and appropriately, as you wisely counsel, as they make sure that they are polite but yet persistent. Yeah. I just I explain that I want to be the most polite squeaky wheel you've ever met, and I'm telling you, it gets you places. And so that's the contrast that gives you the point. If they know your name, they know who you are, you will gain ground. But yes. it won't happen with talk. It'll happen with literally making sure they know you by name. Well, there's a Bible verse that talks about he who, who could be trustworthy and has kind words will be the friend of the king. And I think there's a lot of truth in that when you can give wise counsel. And also, just be bright, be brief, and be gone. They're very busy people, and they you just don't have to have a lot of their time if you have your argument or you can articulate your discussion succinctly. I'm going to hold up for those of you who are watching on webcastonelive.com. Webcastonelive.com is where we do this program each day, each Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. It is the Imprimus. This one is the September 2014, The History and Danger of Administrative Law by Philip Hamburger, a Columbia Law School. What we're talking about is when the administrative branch, the executive branch, decides through rules and regulations and bureaucracies that they're just going to change laws. And David Barton on our show November 5th, you can find on the archives on Tamara Scott Live on YouTube, discussed that 3,800 laws have been added, hear what I'm saying, added, not passed. 3,800 new rules, regulations, laws, and these are laws that have fines with them and can carry, I think, penalties, have been passed since 2012 through your administrative branch through rules and regulations just another reason to push to impeach obama (laughs) but it's not just there in our states as well here in iowa our state legislature handed over the uh, setting of standards educational standards to the state department of education it is to be done if if done by the legislative branch so that you can hold them accountable vote them in or vote them out you cannot should not be making laws setting those laws in the state offices where you can't vote people out of office. And that happens with the Common Core. Michael Peruk, a well-known constitutional educator, uses the Declaration of Independence term to describe that, and it's called pretend legislation. Only the problem is with pretend legislation, we have penalties and fines that are coming with it. And this is the fight in the Common Core. And let me also then uh, inform our listeners as well. uh, If you go to, um, I think it's Three Moms Against Common Core, Three Moms Against Common Core, they're talking about the fact that the Department of the Department of Justice, not even the Department of Education, the Department of Justice has a plan to phase out the authority of the states. They are changing. They are amending. The, educa- the Elementary and uh, Secondary Education Act to phase out the authority of the states to define modified academic achievement standards and develop alternate assessments based on those modified academic... Well, okay, that gets into a bunch of words, but here's what you need to know. It's because it's coming through with the Common Core War that we've been talking about a lot on this program. This is the warning we've been giving you. And now it's through the Department of Justice, of all things, not even the Department of Education. They're changing what you know as law. And this happens too often. So I'm talking right now with um, uh, Sam Bushman, who is the vice president of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. They are in Washington, D.C., December 10th, 2014, walking on your behalf in the cold, blustery weather, office to office, meeting with congressional members to restore what we have lost what we have given away, what the Magna Carta 
began centuries ago removing the divine right of kings and giving that authority to we the people. And here we are voluntarily handing it back over to those who will use it against us, who are power hungry and cannot be voted out of office. Sam, did I round that up pretty good? You did a wonderful (laughs) job. The last thing I kind of want to say is this. I think it's important that you develop a personal relationship with your sheriff. Teach them to be constitutional sheriffs. Let them know that we have their back. They have our back. We can work together for solutions. And the government that governs closest to you governs best. Absolutely. And that's why the county sheriff has so much authority and power within his jurisdiction. And what he needs to know is that he's got the people on his side as he defends liberty, as he acts as the protector of the people, as he intercedes and and, uh, defends on your behalf and acts as a buffer between out-of-control government and the people. We need to champion him. If you don't have a constitutional sheriff, you flat out need to elect one. And so for those, that is perfect advice, wonderful advice to get to know your local county sheriff. And oftentimes we look, we blame Washington, but you're right. We need to start right here at home, I say, with our families. When you have healthy families, society benefits. When you have broken families. families are the fundamental unit of society. Society pays the cost when the family is broken. So start at home, and right now is a perfect time with the Christmas season. Start over if you need to. You can't have peace across the globe if you can't have peace across the dining room table. Especially Can I make the- one quick point and then I gotta go. We're, yes. we're up against another meeting here, but really yes. I want to make the point. A lot of people believe the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officer Association, CSPOA.org, is an organization for sheriffs. That is correct. However, that does not mean that we don't want members of the CSPOA from the public. You can support your sheriff. If we get literally millions of members, United States wide, we can literally put pressure on sheriffs to do the right thing. It's all about accountability, and that's where the American people come in. So become a member of the CSPOA today, CSPOA.org. Thanks so much for your time. Sam, I have one more question for you before you go. Is there literature or a pamphlet that we can get from that organization that we can take to our sheriff to kind of introduce ourselves? Yes, in fact, we have what's called the CSPOA Resolution. It's a single-page, one-side document. It's got eight bullet points or initiatives in it. And what you can do is assign that document yourself and turn it in and ask your sheriff to sign the CSPOA resolution, which is a standing up against anybody who is willing to break the law, including the government. We expect all to obey the law. This is a nation of laws, and the resolution puts your sheriff on the right side of constitutional law to defend our republic. Sam Bushman has been my guest, along with Glenn Palmer from Oregon and Sheriff Mack. We thank all of you. One, for your service to your communities and and, in providing law enforcement, protecting us. But thank you for going to, on our behalf, to Washington, D.C. today to talk to our legislators, our congressional members, and remind them of their responsibility to uphold our Constitution, but to give them the empowerment, to give them the equipment with uh, information, equipping them with ideas and ways that they can stand strong. If you want more information on Sam, libertyroundtable.com. Again, the other website was CS. P-O-A, Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association.org. I am Tamara Scott. You can find us on Tamara Scott Live on YouTube. You can always get the archive, the December 10th show. You can also join us for the live taping each Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time on webcast1live.com. We thank Christians for America for making it possible for us to get information to you, christiansforamerica.com and Webcast One Live Studios. It's up to you, folks. Here we are in the beautiful holy season, and we're about to lose all the blessings and anointings we've had in this country. Be encouraged, but make it happen, and never be complacent. Thanks for